Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you happen to be new here, my name is Marta. Welcome. Today's video is all about DIY decor for your tear trays. So about three videos ago, I made a fall sign and I used this Dollar Tree, I guess you could call it a shadow frame or a shadow box. I'm gonna do virtually the same thing. I had another one on hand, but I'm gonna paint this one completely white using my Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Last year at the Target Dollar Spot, I picked up this cute pack of wooden stickers and they were only 30 cents on clearance. That's when I love to buy my stuff. I'm gonna use the one that says fall, paint it white with some chalk paint. And then I'm gonna take one of these napkins. I got these at the Target Dollar Spot this year. I don't know how many you get in a pack, but they were only a buck. I'm gonna cut one down to size and Mod Podge it to my frame. So the last time I did this, I made a hot mess of things. No, 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 not this time. I'm gonna go ahead and add water to the Mod Podge, make it very nice and creamy. And then I'm just gonna go over the napkin with a very watered down solution of this Mod Podge mix. And I think this worked a lot better. Black acrylic paint. I painted the edges of the wood full sign just to make it a little more, I don't know, <laughs> who knows. And then I took some super glue gel and attached to my sign. And here it is, super easy project. I put it on my Target tear tray. Yes, I found one, I scored. And I think it looks a lot like the original. I was trying to mimic that small dollar Target whatever sign that everybody's, you know, just going crazy over. And I couldn't find it, so I made my own. Mine cost me about a dollar and a quarter. But since then, I found the sign. And like the good hoarder that I am, I bought it. Next DIY, I'm gonna be taking this sign with the apple on it from the Dollar Tree. And you're gonna soon find out I am a tear tray hoarder as well. So I have like this apple theme going on on one of my tear trays and I decided to use this sign. First thing I do is take this chalk paint and I don't really recommend it. I bought it at Target and it's really not that good. It's too thick, but I bought it. It's all I have on hand and I'm gonna use it. I don't bother taking the sticker off the sign. I just go ahead and paint right over it. I didn't like the way the apple looked with the wooden edges, so I just took some red paint and painted over the whole thing, and I also painted the leaf green. And now with a chalk marker, I wanted to write this cute little saying that I saw on Pinterest, but my handshake, my handwriting stinks. Thank God for chalkboard paint just wipe it away. So I rewrote it, and then I was absent the day that they taught script in school. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So I had Mr. Parker write the rest of this cute little saying. I love this little sign. It looks great on my tear tray with the rest of my apple decor. I wrote you are the apple to my pie, but you can certainly write whatever you'd like. I think it would even look super cute if you remove the apple, hot glued a pumpkin up on top, and wrote something fallish. Cute, easy decor for your tear tray. Now the next few DIYs are gonna be geared toward a Halloween tear tray that I'm setting up on my coffee bar. I'm gonna be taking one of these Dollar Tree signs, the one with the heart on it, and the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the heart and that little stick that holds the heart. It gave me a little bit of trouble, but there's nothing sandpaper can't fix. I also removed the label on the front for this one, sanded it down, and then painted the whole thing white. Using my Cricut, I created a little sign, which I'm gonna leave a link for down below. Hopefully this time it will work. And all I do is just take out the bits, you know, the routine, using my Dollar Tree contact paper. I attach it to my vinyl, and this is how I'm going to go ahead and attach my vinyl words to the sign. Now 
I wanted to give this sign a little more detail, so taking this washi tape that I also picked up at the Dollar Tree, I'm just going to go all the way around the edge with it. I am going to use some Mod Podge on the complete sign because, you know, this washi tape sometimes can be a little flimsy. When I get to the end, I make sure it's lined up and then just snip it off with a pair of scissors. I thought it would be cute to create a witch's broom for this sign. What I'm doing here is just taking some Dollar Tree twine. I cut a few strips, I don't know, maybe 20. I cut them about two inches long. You can cut them shorter or longer, it's up to you. I saw this being done on a channel here on YouTube. Her name is Maive, and I will leave a link to her channel. She made the cutest broom. Totally inspired me to make my own. After cutting these strips of twine, she separates them just like you see me doing here so that you can create a bunch of wispy pieces taking a Dollar Tree dowel. They come 15 in a pack. Don't do what I did. I just snapped it in half with my hands, but it really doesn't matter because you're not going to see that part. You're going to stick the dowel in through the twine and just kind of fix the twine in a way that it will cover that dowel. Uh, if you use more twine, obviously you're not going to have such a hard time like I did. Then you're going to take a piece of twine and wrap it around the handle, the lower part of the handle. You still want to leave some of that dowel visible because that's going to be your broom handle. I make a few knots and then I just cut the excess twine. I add some Mod Podge so that the twine will just stay put on the dowel and then I go ahead and add some Mod Podge to the top of the twine or on the twine as well as the bottom just so that it gets a little stiffer. A little Mod Podge up on top and I'm going to go around it with another piece of twine, very, very small. I just wanted extra detail like she did in her video only she didn't use the twine like this. She made some wispy pieces. I did it this way because I always do things the hard way. And then I just put some Mod Podge on there, gave it a haircut. And then I go ahead and I paint my broom handle. I use the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. I save my scraps, I save everything. I had a very small scrap piece of the buffalo check or the gingham ribbon. I hot glued a very tiny piece to where the broom handle and the actual broom meet and I glued it to my sign. Next DIY is super easy. I save Dollar Tree candles, especially if I love the glass container or jar that they're in. I leave them in the freezer for about 24 to 48 hours and then when I take them out, the wax comes out very easy. This one in particular, you can write on it with a white chalk marker, but since I have a Cricut, I made a little sign for it, which I will show you later. And finally, to complete the whole look over by my coffee bar, I wanted to make a little sign that I could hang, and I took this house that I found at the Halloween section at Dollar Tree. Start off by giving it one coat of my Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. Yet another Cricut made sign, which I will leave a link for down below. And then I go in and distress the windows and most of the house, or actually all of the house, with just a little dry brush, some black paint, and I don't get too crazy, but I did want to give it that ghoulish type of look. Now, I didn't like the fact that the windows were kind of, you know, see-through, so I decided to use some black paper that I had laying around, and yes, I got my nails done, and yes, I'm using a utility knife. It really goes with this spooky music. Uh, Marta using a utility knife is not something that you ever want to see. It's very scary. 
Sorry guys, scratch the utility knife. I was definitely doing the most. All you need is a pair of scissors. Cut out your shape to hide the windows as best as possible so that you can't see it from the front and then a little hot glue to secure the paper to the wood and you're all good. Now for the very last bit of detail, I promise guys, <laughs> I took this witch. I got her off of this solar steak light. I picked this up in the Halloween section of Dollar Tree as well. All you have to do is just remove the stick and then remove witchy poo. You also should cut the little flap that's hanging out there. I don't know what else to call it. And now I'm just gonna glue it to the very top of my house. It has like this little piece that protrudes from the back. And that's where I'm gonna put my glue so that Witchy Poo looks like she's 3D. I don't know. I know I usually talk while my video is going, but I really love that music and I wanted you to enjoy it. Anyway, I hope you did. I love the way that this turned out. This little section right here is my uh, faux Ray Dunn coffee station. I only have one thing on here that's Ray Dunn and that's that coffee mug you'll see soon over by my Keurig machine. Everything else I made myself using my Cricut and the font, the skinny. Off camera, I didn't film it like a cuckoo. I made a cute Halloween candy jar using a Dollar Tree glass jar. All I did was glue a knob to the top of the lid and I painted it with the Waverly chalk paint in ink, created a label, which I'm going to link down below for you guys, just in case you want to make one. You can just Mod Podge it to your jar. You will have to cut it the shape that you want and then go over it with a black marker on the edge. I follow Brittany Boren Leach. She's a blogger and I'm a big fan. Congratulations on your new baby, by the way, Brittany. In her fall home tour video, she shows a jar just like this, but she bought hers in a vintage shop. It was love at first sight and I had to make my own. I can make up a tutorial on Instagram if you want to see how I made this. If you're following me over there, you know that I post things there that I do not post here. Like my makeover of last year's Target Dollar Spots farmhouse truck. Now, I got the blue one and it really didn't fit my decor style. So Peter Parker painted this black for me with some spray paint and then I just gave it some white detail and some silver and I think it fits the decor much better in my home now. I can use it all year round. I really hope you all enjoyed today's video, this DIY tier tray decor video. It was so much fun for me. I love tier trays. I have about five of them and I love decorating them for all of the seasons. I have them all over my house. You would think I live in a mansion. I don't. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Coming up on 16,000 subscribers and it's blowing my mind. You guys are the best. I truly, truly mean that. It's the highlight of my day when I can upload a video for all of you. So thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.